Hey guys, it's Shan with Spitfire Combos. Today we are talking about missing toddler Tommy Gibson. If you missed the first episode as part of my missing series on Bianca LeBron, go head on over and take a look. I can also link it into this description. This missing series is to draw more attention to missing children's cases that I personally feel like did not get enough attention and still do not get enough attention. Make sure you like, make sure you share, and let's get into it. So Tommy Gibson was born July 5th, 1988, and lived with his family in Azalea, Oregon. Apparently in the neighborhood that Tommy lived in, they had a stray cat problem, and residents of this neighborhood would constantly bring the stray cats to the local Humane Society, but due to lack of resources and room at the Humane Society, they stopped taking the stray cats. On the morning of March 18, 1991, when Tommy was just two and a half years old, he had been playing alone in his front yard. His father, Larry Gibson, who was the deputy sheriff of the county that they lived in, left the family's home to go for a jog, lasting approximately one hour. Larry left his four-year-old daughter, Karen, in charge of two-and-a-half-year-old Tommy. Allegedly, before leaving for his jog, Larry claims he shot a feral cat on his property with his department-issued handgun and then went off for his jog. Again, he claimed his jog lasted approximately one hour, and when he returned, his wife Judith told him that she could not find Tommy. Karen, Tommy's four-year-old sister, initially told law enforcement that she witnessed a man and a woman pull into the family's driveway in a truck and abduct Tommy, although she could not identify the couple. Larry then proceeds to go inside the home, take a shower, and get dressed into his police uniform. Within an hour, several neighbors, volunteers, and sheriff's deputies began to search the woods around the Gibson home. After some time, Larry actually told the search party that had voluntarily formed to locate Tommy to stop searching for him because it had started snowing and he felt that the situation was not serious enough and also felt that they would eventually find Tommy anyway. It's pretty suspicious if you ask me. I mean, that's really weird. Your two-and-a-half-year-old son... Larry then left the residence in his patrol car, claiming he was going to look at local rest stops in the area. Initial search efforts for Tommy were unproductive, but then several days after Tommy's disappearance, they did bring Larry in for questioning. During this interview with Larry, Larry actually lies to them about leaving the house for a jog that morning and says he never left the home. His supervisors did confront him and tell him that they knew he was lying because of the discrepancy in the mileage of his patrol car. And at that point, he admitted to leaving the home. Then about a year later in 1992, Larry resigned from his deputy position in Oregon and relocated with his wife and daughter to Montana. While in Montana, they had another child named Lisa. In 1993, Judith, Tommy's mom, separated from Larry, Tommy's dad, and returned to Oregon with Karen and Lisa. After returning to Oregon, Karen, Tommy's older sister, reached out to law enforcement and said that she had witnessed her father, Larry, beating Tommy outside on the day of his disappearance and then placing Tommy in his patrol car. There are many theories about what happened to Tommy. One theory from the police department and Larry's then employer is that when Larry shot at the stray cat in their yard, maybe he accidentally shot Tommy, but did not realize it at the time. When he returned from his jog, he saw Tommy's body in the front yard and panicked. He would then spend the next 20 minutes cleaning up the crime scene, put Tommy's body in the trunk of the patrol car, and when that search party formed and he left the scene to go check the rest areas, he was actually disposing of his son's body. Again, that was just one theory that Larry adamantly denies. But after Karen changed her story about what happened to her baby brother, police arrested Larry and charged him with murder. When Karen was asked why she made this story up about a couple kidnapping Tommy, she said her father Larry told her that if she told anyone about what had happened, she would go to jail and also he would come back and kill her too. She then stated that Larry is the one who told her to give the story about a man and a woman in a truck kidnapping Tommy. 
During the murder trial, Larry's now ex-wife told prosecutors that Larry was physically abusive toward Tommy, Karen, and the newborn baby who was born after Tommy's disappearance in Montana. Witnesses also claimed that Larry threatened to kill Judith and Karen after she left him in Montana and headed back to Oregon. Larry's half-sister also testified that Larry had actually confessed to her that he killed Tommy, and this confession did come shortly after Tommy's disappearance. In March 1995, Larry was convicted of second-degree manslaughter. He was only sentenced to three years in prison. He was released just a little over a year later in September of 1996 and continues to deny his involvement in Tommy's disappearance. To this day, neither Tommy or his remains have ever been located. Larry now lives in Montana and is a country music singer. Tommy's missing child poster was featured in the 2007 song Runaway Train by Soul Asylum. If you're not familiar with the song, the song came out uh, early 2000s and it featured 33 missing children and 21 of the missing children that were featured in that song and in that music video were actually found or made contact with their family. So let's talk about it quick. Let's go to the beginning when Larry says that he left his four-year-old in charge of his two-and-a-half-year-old. That seems a bit strange to me. Don't know about you guys. Listen, I was born in the early 90s. Times were very different then. But even then, I can't imagine my parents leaving a four-year-old in charge of me or leaving me as a four-year-old in charge of a two-and-a-half-year-old. Maybe because Larry was a police officer, he felt this was okay, or maybe the area that they lived in was safe enough to do I don't know. Regardless, I, I think that that's pretty irresponsible, but... And then Larry, when the search party forms to find his son, he shoes everyone off and tells them to go home. That he's not concerned and Tommy will show up. That was definitely suspicious. Again, this is one of those cases that didn't get enough attention and with not getting that attention comes not a lot of reporting. My opinion on this is Larry did something to Tommy. I think that that's very clear. I wish for the family's sake they could find a body. I wish that Larry would just speak up. He's already served his time, which is a joke if you ask me. He spent a little over a year in prison. He was sentenced to three years and spent a little over a year in prison. That is insane, unheard of. Larry now lives in Montana and is a country music singer. I'm pretty sure I was able to find him on Google. I compared his photo from back then to a photo that I found for his YouTube channel and his Reverb Nation profile. So I will throw those up on the screen quick. You guys let me know what you think in the comments and with that, Larry, if you come across this video, fuck you! And I am out.